welcome back to another show. Today we're going to pay homage to one of the greatest actresses born TV's sexiest actress by TV Guide, Diana Rigg. Before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe to my channel if you like what you see. Hit the little bell so you can stay informed of upcoming videos. Comment in the comments section below. Let me know what you think of this show. Are you a fan of Diana Rigg? Are you devastated by her recent passing away? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Diana Rigg was born in Doncaster, then in the West Riding of Yorkshire, now in South Yorkshire, in 1938 to Lewis and Beryl Hilda Rigg. Her father was a railway engineer born in Yorkshire. Between the ages of two months and eight years, Rigg lived in Vikanar, Rajasthan, India where her father was employed as a railway executive in the Bikanar State Railway. She spoke Hindi as her second language in those years. She was later sent back to England to attend a boarding school, Full Neck Girls School in a Moravian settlement near Pudsey. Rig hated her boarding school, where she felt like a fish out of water, but believed that Yorkshire played a greater part in shaping her character than India did. She trained as an actress at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts from 1955 to 57, where her classmates included Glenda Jackson and Sean Phillips. Diana Rigg preferred her career in the theater, and she had wide-ranging roles in the Royal Shakespeare Company between 1959 and 1967. Her professional debut was as Natasha Abishwell in the Rada production of the Caucasian Chalk Circle at the York Festival in 1957. In February 2018, she returned to Broadway in the non-singing role of Miss Higgins in My Fair Lady. She commented, I think it's so special when I was offered Mrs. Higgins. I thought it was such a lovely idea. She received her fourth Tony nomination for the role. She was the first major actor, along with her co-star Keith Mitchell, to appear nude on stage in the production of Abelard and Heloise in 1970. But today we want to focus on her television and movie career. She got her start on television in 1959 in A Midsummer Night's Dream with a bit part in a television film. She went on to do the Sentimental Agent Festival Armchair Theater ITV Play of the Week before she got her big break as Emma Peel in The Avengers from 1965 to 1968. The show was pure flop and fantasy, of course, but every time Steed called on Emma Peel saying, Mrs. Peel, we're needed, the roles seemed reversed. Miss Rigg became the tough character who carried a gun and not knocked out villains with karate kicks, while the dapper steed was armed only with a steel-lined bowler hat and an umbrella that concealed a stiletto. She drove a sports car and a motor scooter, with steed riding behind her. She would appear in 51 episodes and clearly was the most popular co-star with Patrick McNee as Mr. Steed. She succeeded Honor Blackman as Kathy Gale, who appeared in Series 2 through 3, and was succeeded by Linda Thorson in Series 6 of The Avengers. In 1973, she got her own short-lived television series called Diana, appropriately, which lasted from 73 to 74. I don't know whether to play cards tonight or go to the fights. Boxing? I love it. Maybe I could go with you some night. These fights you wouldn't like, they're at my house. <laughs> she did a series of television films, including In This House of Bride, The Morricum and Wise Show, The Marquise, Hedda Gubbler, Player of the Month, Witness for the Prosecution, and appeared in another short-lived series, The Mrs. Bradley Mysteries, which gave us five episodes. Diana played Adela Bradley with Neil Dudgren as her chauffeur, George Moody, based on the character created by detective writer Gladys Mitchell. From 2013 to 2017, she appeared in Game of Thrones as Elena Tyrell. She's a disease. I regret my role in spreading it. You will too. Also in 2013, she appeared in the Doctor Who episode as Mrs. Winifred Gilliflower, along with Matt Smith, the 11th Doctor, in a production of The Crimson Horror. Can you imagine the joy? I mean, and, and uh, it had such wonderful parts, too. Um, outrageous lines, I have to say, which is great fun. Thanks to Mark. And, you know. and something that took you back as well to your Yorkshire roots, because yes, you were, of course, born in Doncaster, weren't yes, you? Yes, I was. Yes, I'm the doctor, you're nuts, and I'm going to stop you. I'm afraid, Mr. Sweet, and I cannot allow that. Strolling so that Gaddis had written an on-screen relationship between Ma and I, it is truly delicious. We have never worked together before because the offers have not been tempting. But when such a funny and original script comes through, you know the time has come. She also appeared in Victoria, a 
Christmas Carol Goes Wrong, The Snail and the Whale as Narrator, and All Creatures Great and Small, and has a posthumous series coming up in the film Black Narcissus. She plays Mother Dorothea on the silver screen to appear in the Assassination Bureau. And, of course, her most famous film role was in the James Bond film on Her Majesty's Secret Service as Teresa Tracy DiVincenzo. My name's Bond, James Bond. Opposite one-time James Bond, George Lazenby. In the film, Bond faces Blofeld, this time played by Telly Savalas, who is planning to hold the world to ransom by a threat to render infertile all food, plants, and livestock through the actions of a group of brainwashed angels of death. Along the way, Bond meets, falls in love with, and eventually marries Contessa Teresa de Vincenzo, Diana Ray. I think you're in some sort of trouble. Would you like to talk about it? No, Mr. Bond. The only thing you need to know about me is that I pay my debts. She also appeared in Julius Caesar and the Hospital, also a teacher of blood, 1973 British horror comedy film directed by Douglas Hickox and starring Vincent Price as vengeful actor Edward Lionheart and Diana Rigg as his daughter Edwina. Lionheart, what the hell do you want here? Massacre, Diana. Quite insane. Oh my God! This was one of Vincent Price's favorite films, as he had always wanted the chance to act in Shakespeare, but found himself typecast because of his work in horror films. Diana Rigg regards this as her best film. She also appeared in A Little Night Music, and in 1981, she played Lady Holiday in The Great Muppet Caper. This is the second of a series of live-action feature films starring the Muppets. I feel as if thieves were breathing down my neck. Thieves aren't breathing down your neck. In this film, the Muppets are caught up in a jewel heist while investigating a robbery in London. Riggs' character is a famous British fashion designer who has been the victim of a jewel heist. It also features Charles Grodin as Nick Holliday, Lady Holliday's brother. Although he falls in love with Miss Piggy, he commits jewel heists on his sister, assisted by three of her fashion models, Carla, Darla, and Marla. She also appeared in such films as Evil Under the Sun, Snow White as the Evil Queen, A Good Man in Africa, Parting Shots, Heidi, the Painted Veil, The Honorable Rebel, and Breathe as Lady Neville. She was active right up until the very end and has a posthumous release in The Last Night in Soho. It's an upcoming psychological horror film directed by Edgar Wright. She's been nominated for numerous awards including Emmys, Laurels, Tonys, Golden Globes, BAFTAs, winning several including the BAFTA TV Award for Best Actress, Broadcasting Press Guild Award for the same role as Mother Love, and an Evening Standard Theatre Award for Best Actress in Medea. Also, a Tony Award for Best Performance by a Leading Actress in a Play, also for Medea. She won an Emmy for Best Supporting Actress in a Miniseries or TV Movie for her role in Rebecca. Her final award was 2019's Cannes series Variety Icon Award. And that was a brief look at the career of the late Diana Rigg. Diana had been a smoker from the age of 18. She was still smoking 20 cigarettes a day in 2009. By December 2017, she had stopped smoking after serious illness led to heart surgery. Cardiac ablation two months earlier. As a devout Christian, she commented that, My heart! had stopped ticking during the procedure. So I was up there, and the good Lord must have said, send the old bag down again. I'm not having her yet. But this time, the good Lord took her home on September 10th, 2020, at the age of 82. That was our look at the late Diana Rigg. We hope you enjoyed this look at her film and television career with a brief mention of her theatrical career. If you like what you see, then please let me know what you think in the comments section below. And I want to remind you that if you love comics and pop culture as much as I do, you'll subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to stay informed of upcoming videos. Please share this video as that will help me gain subscribers as well. I also want to remind you to check out my columns and reviews on two sites, Comics for Sinners and Comic Crusaders. I also have my own franchises, Adolescent Radioactive Samurai Platypi and Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter. The latter has been picked up by Cutthroat Comics. Check the links below for more details and the link to Dracula Rising, which is available on Amazon. Here's some great artwork from Raphael Lanohaus from the origin story Foul Blood. Once again, available on Cutthroat Comics. See the links below. I also have a book which is a collection of my reviews and columns called Comics, Pop, Culture, and Politics. You can also find t-shirts and posters on Teespring. Again, check the links below for all Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter merchandise. 
there doesn't appear to be any cream. The cream is in the kitchen. Oh. I could take it black. 